Welcome to ECA Elimu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed a graph of UV against U plus V. And in this case, we said that the graph is a straight line graph starting from the origin and the gradient of this graph is going to give us the focal length of the mirror that is UV against V plus U. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss another graph, a graph of magnification against the image distance. And what we are going to realize here, this graph is going to cut the y-intercept at negative 1, and it will also intercept x-axis. And in this case, the reciprocal of the gradient of this graph is going to give us the focal length of the mirror. And also we can get the focal length of the mirror by just reading the point where it cuts the x-axis. So we can get the focal length in two ways in this graph. One, we get the gradient of this graph, then the reciprocal will give us the focal length. Then if we also read directly the point where this line cuts the x-axis, that will give us the focal length of this graph of magnification against the image distance. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to draw and analyze a graph of magnification against the image distance, and then use this graph to determine the focal length of the mirror and the radius of curvature of the mirror that we are going to use. So a graph that we are going to analyze here is a graph of magnification against V. And in this case, from the mirror formula, if we have 1 over F is equals to 1 over V plus 1 over U. In this case, if we opt to multiply by V in all sides, then we multiply by V like that. We are not going to change anything. We have just multiplied by V. And if we remove that V, we will remain with our mirror formula. So in this case, our mirror formula is going to look like 1 of V over F is equals to V over V plus V over U. So in this case, mathematically, a number divided by itself is equals to 1. So if we equate V over V as 1, then we are going to get V over F is equals to 1 plus V over U. But now from the knowledge that we have, V over U is the same as magnification. So here, V over U, but V over U over U is equals to magnification. Then now if we substitute V over U with magnification, then we remain with V divided by F is equals to magnification plus 1. Now in this case, if we want to draw a graph of M against V, then it means we must leave M on one side. Then now we will take this one on the other side. Then we will remain with an equation which looks like magnification is equals to V uh, over F minus 1. Now this is a very good equation here. And then now from this point, we can rearrange this equation in terms of Y is equals to MX plus C. In this case, magnification is going to take the Y axis. Then M is going to take 1 over F then x is going to take v because we are drawing a graph of magnification against v. And then now in this case, this graph, the y-intercept is going to be negative 1. Now, if we leave this negative 1 aside, this one here, and then make f the subject of the formula, in this case it will be m is equals to v over f. Now, if we make f the subject of the formula times f times f, then it's going to be f m is equals to V, then it faded by M, divided by M, then we will remain with our F, the focal length in this case is going to be V over M. This is a very important equation, I want you to take note of it, because we are going to compare it with another equation very soon. Now this is a theoretical way of finding the focal length of 
this mirror, theoretically from the mirror formula. Then now, if we can sketch a graph, a graph of magnification against the image distance V, in this case, this is our uh, uh, Cartesian plane like that. Then this is Y axis, this is the X axis. This magnification, this is image uh, distance like that. So what we have just said from what we have dis discovered in this equation here, that this graph will pass or will cut the X, the Y axis. It will cut the Y axis at negative one. So maybe we have negative one here, then it's going to cut at that point. Then now our graph is going to be like this, where it is cutting the Y axis at negative one. Then it's going to cut also the X axis where point where M and V meet. Therefore, in this case, if we can get the gradient, gradient is equal to change in M to change in V. So in this case, if we get the gradient, we're going to change M our change in V. In this case, our gradient is going to be M over V. And I want you to look at this equation very seriously. Compare this equation, call it equation two, with equation one that we uh, wrote here. Look at equation one. Equation one here. This is equation one. Compare it with equation two that we have here. Here we have f in equation one, we have f is equals to v over m. But from the gradient, we have m over v. So it means what we have in equation one is a reciprocal of what we have in the gradient. Therefore, it means if we can write this one in another way, we can say one of the gradient is going to be V over M. And if one of the gradient is equal to V over M and V over M is the same as the focal ring. So it means when you draw your graph of magnification against the image distance, the gradient that you will get of that line if you get it reciprocal, one of that gradient, it will give you the focal length of the mirror that you are going to use. And if again, we are going to realize, if you read the value at the X intercept, where this line cuts the X intercept, it will automatically give you the focal length. So in this case, you can get the focal length in two ways. By reading the point that cuts the X axis, or you get the gradient of this line, then you find the, the reciprocal, what you will get is the focal length of the mirror that is being used. So let's handle one question. A concave mirror and an illuminated object are used to produce a sharp image of an object on a screen. The object distance and the image distance are given below. Complete the table and then plot a graph of magnification M against V, that is the image distance, and use it to find the radius of curvature and F, that is the focal length of this mirror. So in this case, what we do first, we have to complete this table. We have the image distance, that is V, and we have the object distance U. In this case, they want magnification. Remember, magnification is equals to image distance to object distance, the ratio. In this case, we want to divide this image distance to object distance. Like in the first case, we want to divide 20 divided by 8, which is going to give us 0 0.2500. Then the second one is going to give us 1.498. Then the third one is going to give us 2.500. Then the other one is going to give us 3.495. Then the other one is going to give us 4.489. So in this case, after that, then you draw the uh, you draw the axis of your graph. In this case, we are going to have our x axis and the y axis. The x axis here is going to run uh, from up down. That is vertical, like this one here. And then the y axis is going to run across. In this case, from left to right like this one here now what we do from here this is the x 
And this is the Y. And remember, we draw four quadrants at the first, second, third, and fourth quadrants. And in this case, remember this graph, we are, are approximating it to pass through negative one from what we analyzed before. That's why we draw the four quadrants. So in this case, what you do, you use an appropriate scale for X axis and the Y axis. But before that, you must identify what you should place on the Y axis and the X axis. Like in this case, in the Y axis, we are supposed to put magnification, magnification M, no units. Then the Y axis we have to put in the X axis, that is the image distance, image distance V in terms of centimeter, what they have given us. So after, after doing this, then you look at in the X axis, we choose the scale. The X axis, the smallest value is 20 and the highest value is 88. So we can go by these boxes. This one here will go 20. Remember, this is the origin 0, 40. Then we have 60, 80, 100, 120. Then in the Y axis, we can move in terms of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then below here, we can go negative 1, negative 2. So in this case, we can plot now what we have here on this table. And the first plotting will be at the x-axis, we have 20. Then in the y-axis, we have 0 0.25. So this is 20, 0 0.25 is here. 0 0.25 is at middle, it's at this point here. Then we have another one. At 40, we have 1.49, that's about 1.5. So in this case, at 40, we will move up to 1.49, then we will make our mark there. Then for 56, so this is 40, 50, 56, we have uh, 2.5, so at 56, we have 2.5, 2.5 is at this point here, at this point here. Then we have another point at 72, this 60, 70, 72, it is at 3.49, that is about 3.5. So 72, 3.49, that is 3.5. In this case, it's going to be at this point here. Then we have another one as 88, 88, 88, somewhere here. Then it's going to pass through in the y-axis, that is 4.48, that is 4.5 approximately. So in this case, we'll go up to 4.49 like in this point here 88 4.49 is here and now from that we draw a line joining these points so in this case if we draw a line which joins majority of these points this line is going to pass uh, like this it's going to be our line like that passing through three points and two points are out of the line but equally this one is out of the line and this one is also out of the line but it's equally as good as that so in this case we find the gradient of this line so that we can get uh, the focal length so we can take any point on this line like if we decide to take this point here i want to take this point here this point, the x-axis is 60, then the y-axis is, that is, the y-axis is 2.7, 2.7. Then in the other point that we can take is this one here, where it cuts the, so here we can have our, our triangle like that. Where it, it cuts the x-axis, it means y is 0. So the coordinates that we can get from this point is x is 16, yeah, that is 16 because these boxes are 9. So if we move back like that, then this is 16. 
then the y axis is going to be uh, 0 because it is at x is equals to 16 and y is equals to 0. So in this case, if we use these two coordinates to find the gradient of this line, then what you are going to have is the y axis. So change gradient is equals to change in y over change in x. In this case, our gradient is going to be uh, y axis. We are going to have 2.7 divided by 0, not divided by 0, but minus 0. Because here we are subtracting y, subtract with y. So in this case, this y, we subtract with this y here, minus 0. Then we divide by x, that is 60, minus 16. So in this case, we want to get our gradient as 2.7 divided by 60 minus 16. It's going to be 44. So our gradient is going to be 2.7 divided by 44, which is going to give us 0 0.06136. So that is our gradient. But what do we say about the gradient? In this case, the gradient is going to give us 1 over f. So in this case now, if we need f, let me do it up here. If we need f, we can take this one. We take g is equals to 0 0.06136. So if we need now f, it's going to be 1 over g, which is in this case going to be 1 over 0 0.06136. And now if we get this f is going to be what we got that is 0 0.6136 we we take one we divide by that so and if we do that we are going to get one divided by 0 0.06136 is the same as 16.29 16.29 is the focal length according to the gradient that we have. And then we can also read the gradient in terms of the points where it cuts the x-axis. These points here where we, where we even extracted our coordinate from, this line cuts this point at 16. So we read it as 16. So also it means here we can get the focal length by just reading this as 16, as you can see it's very, very slightly. This is, this is 16.29. This is 16.0. But remember, this one we cannot read accurately or we cannot uh, extract this point exactly because we are dealing with a screen and it, we have, it has limited uh, boxes and they are very small. But here it's approximately 16 and something. So as you can see, the two answers are tallying. What we get from the gradient and what we read directly on the x-axis are almost the same. Now here they need the radius of curvature. Remember now if you have f, you are going to get the radius of curvature. We are going to multiply 2f. You will get the radius of curvature. Two focal rings, they give the radius of curvature. So if it is 16, it is 16 times 2, which is 32. That is the radius of curvature. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will wind up the topic by discussing the application of curved reflectors.